Good morning everyone or good afternoon, good evening, whatever time day it is, wherever you're watching, whenever you're watching. Um, hello, it's really nice to see you. Today I really wanted to talk to you all about um, imagining what it's like or what it would be like to be able to celebrate whatever event is important to you, whatever some, whatever thing has happened in life that you really want to celebrate or commemorate or honour, it's possible. And sometimes I think we we can all fall into the trap of um, thinking quite narrowly about, okay, well, you know, in society we're used to having ceremonies like weddings and funerals, um, but actually there there's a lot more in life to just getting married or um, the end of life. And there's things that you can do within those two ceremonies as well that don't have to mean that you have to follow uh, you know, everybody else and do what's expected or do what you think you should be doing in those ceremonies. There's lots of different options. So I kind of wanted to talk to you really about all the different things that I can think of that um, you might want to celebrate and how you could do that. But also I'm really interested to hear what you might be thinking. Is there something that's happened in your life that um, you know, maybe you've never heard of anyone having a ceremony or um, sort of marking that particular event in their lives before, but actually it's something that's really important to you. Um, and I think it is really important for all of us to be able in life to stop and acknowledge when something, whether it's good or bad, has happened and, and, and mark that event in some way, whether it's to, you know, absolutely be um, joyous and celebrating that moment um, or whether it's that we need help to kind of process whatever mm -hmm. it is that's happened. Um, it, it, it's really important to allow ourselves that time and space um, to to do those things. And a ceremony is a really great way to be able to do that. So I guess um, starting with kind of weddings and, and funerals, within weddings and, and, and funerals, you know, there's lots of misconceptions about where you, sh where you are allowed or where you should have those ceremonies take place, um, who can arrange them, who can organise them, um, and what you can do within those, those ceremonies. Um, you know, when you have a um, legal marriage ceremony, um, either with a registrar or a, a religious minister, um, there will be a very set format, set things that have to be say, said, um, set things that have to be done and in, in probably in a certain order as well. Um, with a celebrant led ceremony, you can do whatever you want. You can celebrate in whichever way you want. You can be as traditional or non-traditional as you like, as religious or as non-religious. And that actually doesn't go just for weddings. That is, that's all ceremonies. Um, you know, anything that you want to celebrate, you don't have to um, stick to a very traditional plan or, or route. Um, you can do if you want to, absolutely. Traditions are there for a reason um, and some of them are very popular. There's others that are less popular and less um, well known that you might want to, to pick up on. Um, and all tradition has got um, its roots in, in history. Um, well, actually, no, not all tradition. Lots of traditions have got their roots in history, but actually traditions had to start somewhere. They didn't always exist the whole time. So, you know, by having a ceremony and doing it your way, actually you're creating your own tradition. You're creating something brand new that you can take forward and actually maybe um, other members of your family or your children or others will then pick up on and go, actually, this is our family tradition to do this in this way. Um, that's a really nice thing as well. Um, I wrote a blog post recently and actually just got published yesterday, so it's on the website if you wanna to go to the blog page and have a look, um, about ceremonies in general and why would you even bother having a ceremony, you know? Um, as I said, I think it's a really important way to be able to, to celebrate and, and honour things that happen in life. Um, and you can read more about that on the blog. Um, I've also got a couple of blogs about traditions and where some of them come from and, and traditions in general about why we have traditions. Um, so that might be interesting to you. But I guess moving away from the weddings and funerals, which are sort of the, the two major things in life that we, we recognise, society recognises as things that we have ceremonies for. Actually, um, 
you know there's, there's other ways to celebrate if you're a couple and you want to um, celebrate the love that you have between you but for whatever reason getting married is not something that you want to do there's lots of reasons why you might not choose um, to get legally married to one another um, but there's other things you can do so there's commitment ceremonies you can have a commitment ceremony there's no legally binding um there's nothing legal about that ceremony so it's just purely about the two of you as a couple being able to express your love and your commitment to one another as a couple um it may be that you live together you live together for a long time um, and you want to, to celebrate your relationship it might be that actually you and your partner don't live together but you've been um, companions and, and in a relationship um, for a, a long time and you equally want to be able to celebrate your relationship um, and your friendship and your connection with each other um, in a really beautiful ceremony and ceremonies don't have to be big, huge, lavish affairs. They, they, they can be, absolutely. And, you know, some of those um, types of ceremonies are absolutely amazing kind of spectacles to, to watch and to witness. Um, but equally, they really don't at all. It, it can be as simple as just you and your partner, your celebrant and, you know, uh, it, it, well, actually, it could be as simple as just you and your partner. That's it. We don't even need to have guests. If you don't want guests to be present, there's absolutely no reason why you have to. Um, or you could have, you know, just a few select um, friends and close family. Um, so it can be as uh, on a as a bigger scale or smaller scale as you want it to be. The the, the choice is really yours. So there's commitment ceremonies for you as a couple. If 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 getting married is not what you want to do. Um, if you are already married and maybe you've got a big um, anniversary coming up, you might want to renew your vows. Um, it might not even be a big anniversary. It might be your first anniversary and you just want to have a small ceremony to, to just reaffirm your vows and your relationship with one another. Um, it could be that you've had events in your life that, you know, really have brought your the strength of your relationship and your commitment to one another um, into sort of sharp focus. So uh, I did a renewal of our ceremony very recently. Um, and one of the motivations for that couple doing that ceremony was that they'd had some uh, one of them had had some health issues, um, which led to them being in hospital and really um, brought their relationship into sort of that, that kind of you know it, it brought a whole new meaning really to to how they felt about each other and they really wanted to be able to to reaffirm their vows and reaffirm their relationship with one another in a ceremony so that was a really beautiful um thing to do so there's those types of things you can do for you as a couple um it might be that you are um in a relationship with somebody where maybe one of you or both of you have um children from previous relationships so actually all of you together as a new family unit are coming together so it's not necessarily just about you two as a couple it could be about you and your children all coming together um to, to form a, a new family if you like and so you can have a ceremony around that you could have a family commitment ceremony where actually all of you are involved in that ceremony and um you you're you're marking the joining of you all together and that you are all becoming um part of of that one relationship that can be a really uh, beautiful thing to do so there's that kind of thing um what else might you celebrate in life you know another sort of more traditional um, ceremony is a religious christening so quite often when um, babies are born we think that um, if we're going to do anything it, it probably has to be a religious christening or a, another religious um, service of some sort to to mark um, your baby's birth um, and that obviously is an option and traditionally um, christenings or um, religious ceremonies are about welcoming your child into that religion and and what that means um in, in terms of that religion and, uh, and faith um and if that's for you that's absolutely brilliant um, if that's not for you a, a brilliant alternative is a naming ceremony so um you know it doesn't 
have to be about a baby that's only a few months old. It could be that your child is um, a toddler or older um, and you still want to have um, a naming ceremony for them to, to welcome them officially into your family, to welcome them into your wider community. Um, it can really, yeah, it can really be a beautiful thing to do. I had my daughter, um, a naming ceremony for my daughter because a traditional christening wasn't really for us as a family. So um, that was, uh, and I found that a really, a really meaningful, actually I feel quite emotional just talking about it. <laughs> um, it was a really meaningful experience because we were able to have the people we wanted there um, and really make commitments to our child. Um, so for us, I think um, if we had have had a religious christening, we would have asked people to be godparents who may not necessarily have had the faith themselves and may have, have felt uncomfortable or awkward about making statements in, in a place of worship that actually they really weren't 100% committed to, um, although they, they still felt committed to our daughter. So I'm back. Sorry, I think the internet just uh, conked out there, but it's back. So having a naming ceremony um, can be a really, a really brilliant way to be able to celebrate your child. Um, and it, it can be more than one child. If you've got more than one child that you want to celebrate at the same time, fantastic, let's do that. Um, so that's naming ceremonies. What else have we got? I guess leading on from naming ceremonies, you know, those types of ceremonies don't have to be just about children. It could be um, that you're an adult, maybe you have um, gone through the process of changing your gender or you identify as a different um, gender than you were born with um, and therefore you have changed your name um, and maybe you want to, to, to publicly mark that um, or you know with, with some friends and family around you, um, you know really really mark that event in your life that that change in your life that you know you were that person there and now from today you are this person that can be a really beautiful um, way to celebrate that as well um, it could be that maybe that you're getting divorced <laughs> um, I do know of people that have had um, parties and ceremonies um, to mark their divorce and um, particularly for women who maybe took their husband's name um, when they got married um, and now are reverting to um, their maiden name or choosing a different name completely um, and I, I really want to kind of draw a line in the sand and mark that event again I, I suppose um, you know having been one person in that relationship with that with that other person for however long um, and now from today you are known by a different name you are a different person um, and you're, you're not part of that relationship anymore that can be something that's um, that, that can be really really great to do and and I think with any of these ceremonies it's it's a way of um, it's almost like a rite of passage it's a way for you to um, to really process that change and put a, a point in the map where you can say this is when you know I celebrated this event and th this this marks the start of my new chapter in my life um, I mean it could be also as simple as celebrating a special birthday or an anniversary um, as I said at the beginning of this I'd be really really interested to hear if anybody's got any ideas or thoughts of uh, it, things that have happened to them that they even if it was in the past they thought you know what I would have really liked to have um, been able to celebrate that um, I'd be really interested to hear about it because I think whatever it is in life that you want to celebrate we can create a ceremony around it um, and and I'd be I'd be up for doing that for you um, so I think just lastly just going touching back on um, sort of the, the funeral element and that end of life um, you know a, a nice alternative to a, a more traditional funeral service which let's face it we've probably all been to a funeral where it feels really intensely emotional really hard to be a part of and I think you know being in a church funeral or a, a crematorium, there is a certain atmosphere and a certain um, a certain feel to those ceremonies. I think, 
and I'm not saying that that's wrong at all um, but it might be that actually you want to have a different type of celebration to honour the person that's passed away so it could be that you want to have a celebration of life um, it, that, that's completely separate to a, um, a traditional funeral. It could be um, that you want to, you know, stand in the middle of the wood and plant a tree and remember that person. We can create a ceremony around that um, to to to, um, to honour that person's memory. Um, it could be that you have a beloved pet that um, has passed away and you know was very much a member of the family and you want to have a ceremony to 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 remember them and to honour them that's you know that's a really special thing to do um, and equally you know those of us who may have experienced pregnancy loss um, particularly early pregnancy loss when there's not an opportunity to have a funeral um, that's an equally important um, time in your life to, to honour and acknowledge and a ceremony can really help with that as well and that can be a beautiful thing. So I've spoken about quite a lot of different life events there and um, that, like I said there's probably lots lots more uh, that you can think of so drop me a comment in in this live or send me a message if you want to uh, have a chat and let me know what your ideas are um, if you want to know more about what I do just visit the website it's www.theauthenticcelebrant.co.uk you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram you can also sign up to my newsletter if you want to keep up to date with um, news and advice and tips about ceremonies um, and all that kind of thing um, it's been lovely to talk to you again today and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.